All right, joining me live on this uh, bulletin is Walter Anderson, author and American academic, who is uh, joining us live from the U.S. Walter Anderson, thank you for joining us on Beyond World is One. Now, four phases down, fifth phase on today. Your, your assessment, if I were to ask you, look in the crystal ball, so to speak, and tell us where India might be headed at this point in time. Well, a couple of interesting things is that the voting turnout um, is about the same as it was last time, right. uh, so, which means there's clearly no wave going on either for or against the prime minister or for or against anyone else. But there are a couple of interesting things that some of the uh, pre-election polling showed is that in the three critical Hindi-speaking states that the BJP lost in December, the prime minister's um, uh, um, the, the appeal of the prime minister, the support for him, is over 60 percent in all three of those. Now, in uh, UP, there is something of – it's a little more problematic. It's only about 43 uh, percent uh, favorable to the prime minister. But he's considerably above Rahul Gandhi in all of those places. In fact, the only places where Rahul Gandhi is ahead is in some of the south – and among groups, uh, among Muslims and among Dalits. And that's not surprising in, in either of those cases. So I think what you have is it in some ways makes the election more exciting because it's a little more unpredictable as to how it's going to end up. Indeed, and we've been discussing about the election uh, for the last four phases as well. Now, from your vantage, Walter Anderson, do you at all see an, a wave or an undercurrent for or against a party or candidate? No, I don't. Uh, and and why one do you sign say that? Uh, one sign of that is the voting uh, statistics indicate that the percentage who are voting is about the same, or in one or two cases it's slightly lower in some states, and in one case it's slightly higher. But there's, there's, there's no surge. Uh, uh, in the voting percentage. It hasn't declined, which means that there's still interest, uh, a relatively high interest uh, in the elections. But there doesn't appear to be a wave, at least if you look at voting statistics uh, and, and how they turn out, which is one of the reasons I mentioned the prime minister's popularity in the in the pre-election polls indicate that, you know, that, that he is doing rather well in those three states, which are quite important uh, at the end of the day. Uh, uh, which the BJP lost uh, in the state in the, in the assembly elections, and in that he, you know, sixty percent is a rather high figure. Now, can that translate into seats for the BJP? And there's some debate about that among political scientists. But I tend to think it, it provides a setting that's more favorable to him, at least in those three states, than elsewhere. UP is 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 where the interesting case is because there it's lower. It's not nearly as high as in those three states I just mentioned. It's only 43, 45 percent, you know, that, that he is uh, considered as, as support is expressed for him as, as a person. And that sort of follows that, you know, the almost all the predictions are that the BJP is going to lose seats in that area. And so they have to make up uh, in somewhere else. And in the polls, the last poll on this poll, you know, you've got votes uh, voting in West Bengal, which is what the BJP is hoping to get considerable support. Uh, and uh, in Orissa, another state in the east where the BJP is expecting to get to pick up support to make up for the loss in, uh, in particularly in Uttar Pradesh. Also, in this, uh, in, in the 2019 election, Walter Anderson, two things are being spoken about. One, of course, is the vote share of a particular party. The other is the polling percentage over the last four phases, which has been in the high 60s. Now, which way will that swing uh, in favor of the BJP or against it? Well, if you had, you know, actually, my point is uh, there's been a surge, but uh, increased right. voting percent but in some places, not all places, some places it's actually lower. Uh, it, it's more or less about the same as it was last time, which is why the point I make is it made is that you don't appear to have a surge for or against anyone else because the voting percentage is more. It's relatively high by American standards, but by Indian standards, particularly the last elections, it's relatively the same as it was the last time before. Uh, so, 
uh, you know, if you look at this election and um, this phase of the election and the previous phases of the election, which is very important for the BJP because a large percentage of the BJP votes, uh, uh, MP votes, come from those areas. The BJP is not expected to do well in the Dravidian speaking south of India, and all the pre election polls show that to be the case as well. But I don't see uh, there, even in, in elections that have been in, in, in the districts of the south, I don't see a surge either. I don't see a voting percentage jump in any of those either. Uh, now, I know in this set of elections, you have you know some very important people running, and it's going to be important right. to see how Rahul Gandhi does and how his mother does and how Rajnath Singh does, uh, performs. Um, uh, I strongly suspect that each of them are going to win their constituency, but the question is by how much. Walter Anderson, you spoke about the key battles uh, in, in this phase of election today. As you mentioned, Ameti, Raidbareli, Lucknow, and so on. And you mentioned that Rahul Gandhi might hold on to his seat. Is that what you're saying? Yes, I, I suspect what I've been hearing and the statistics I've seen polling is that he is likely to hold on, perhaps not with the margins that he has had before, but he's very likely. He's got a formidable opponent as well against him this right. time more. Um, and so he, you know, he, I, I'm sure that he's a little bit worried, which is, you know, I, I think there's no doubt the reason that they had to give him another seat in, a, in, in what in many ways is a safer constituency in the South, in Kerala, is, oh, my goodness, what happens if he were to lose? You know, uh, you can't have him, you know, not represented in the parliament. He's, you know, the leader of the largest opposition party, or at least presently the largest opposition party. So he had to have another seat. So I think the Congress is a little concerned. And the very fact that Priyanka, you know, pulled out of uh, running in Varanasi against the prime minister is that they weren't too sure, I think, you know, how well that would, you know, would go down, you know, in terms of the voters that, you know, that she was running and see how well she would do. Walter Anderson, if I can come back to you one more time in this discussion, you spoke about the third Gandhi, Priyanka Gandhi Vajra, in this election. She is not contesting this time, but how do you see her performance uh, and her rallies in focusing on the eastern part of the state in particular? Well, I think she's done relatively well. I mean, the turnouts have been quite high from what I have seen and, and have heard. Um, and so, obviously, she's been something of an asset to the party, and she's been, you know, given Eastern UP as, as her area of management, and the party was very enthusiastic about it. But I don't expect the Congress to pick up a lot of seats, to be quite frank, in UP. Right. It, it wasn't able to work out an alliance with the two major parties, uh, in the two major opposition parties, or regional parties in the state. And I think that that may well hurt it. And in fact, the fact that they're in many places putting up candidates in opposition to those parties may in fact help the BJP, to be quite frank. All right, on that note, Walter Anderson, thank you so much for joining us on Beyond World is One. Appreciate it. Thank you.